Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India learners i am dr himani singh working as an assistant professor with institute of business management gla university mathura today in this session i am going to talk about another important topic that's professional writing so i welcome you all to the session 5 of the course that's professional communication for managers and in this session we are going to cover a lot many things about professional writing after this session you all will be able to understand that what are the basic principles of professional or business writing we call very commonly not just this in fact you will be able to get the understanding of types of business correspondence which you tend to use when you will be at your workplace also i will be highlighting the format of business letters which you can use when you are at your professional work front so moving forward with the term that business correspondence what's the need of business correspondence why you want to go on for written communication why as a manager you need to have the skills of writing yes as a manager you are going to be in different roles wherein you will be communicating with your customers or your employees or your employer and so on so for that many a times just by going with the oral communication is not the sufficient method you also need to go with written communication so for that we do have or as a manager you need to have good and expressive writing skills now i just want to focus upon that as a manager what's the need so the very first point talks about that to maintain contact with the external world yes as a business person when you are in the society when you are in the market you need to extend your contact whether it is with other competitors or your customers and so on so for that you really need to have good writing skills so that you can correspond with them through some written materials not just this in fact when we talk about written communication it also serves for the record purposes yes everything cannot be done orally when we talk in terms of verbal communication at the work front you need to have something in documents for example rules regulations instructions and so on apart from this through business correspondence you can create an impact in the mind of the public or else you can say that it is a very good medium to create good will in the mind of the people who are linked with your business whether it is stakeholders or investors or your customers or so on what you can do for example what you can do is that certain times you just need to send a thank you letter to all your customers just to make them feel special that yes i really thank you that you are being taking my services my products of my organization so that's again you th that things tends to create goodwill so this is what you can go on for and that's why business correspondence is required also one more point when we talk about written communication it is one way which is going to help you out in removing the ambiguity why ambiguity because through written communication you can go on for correct facts and figures 
right, which are going to be more accurate because when it is about oral communication, we tend to quote many facts which might not be very accurate, which might not be very much correct. So yes, you need to have uh, or you can say that you can remove ambiguity in communication through written communication in your business. So now moving forward, I'll be talking about the forms of different business correspondence which you will be doing when you are going to become a manager. Yes, one is internal correspondence and when we say internal correspondence as a manager, you might be required to inform your employees about some rules, regulations or might be possible that you need to share some of the report with some of your colleague or you are going to prepare a business plan which you need to submit to your employer. So that is what is internal correspondence that inside the organization when you need to communicate with the people around you, you need to take help of written communication for several purposes like letters, reports and so on. And not just the internal correspondence, you are also required to go on for the external correspondence. Externally, yes, there are many people like your stakeholders, your shareholders, your investors, your suppliers, your, the government, the competitors, yes, competitors as well. You might be uh, interacting with them, communicating with them and yes, the best medium is written communication when you really want to have some kind of records that yes you communicated these things to these many people. So this is again internal as well as for external correspondence you are going to use for business correspondence. Also many a times it is just a sales correspondence, pure sales correspondence. Yes, that can be external, but again, that is just one aspect of the external correspondence that is pure sales correspondence. I just want to communicate or pitch some of the product or some of the service of my organization to my people. I just want to compile a sales report which can tell me that what were the sales figures in the past five years and how we are progressing or how we are laying back. So this is why you might be requiring a document which is purely meant for sales correspondence, right? Apart from this, personalized correspondence is also one thing which you will be going for. I'll tell you how. Think yourself as a manager, right? You are the employer, you are the senior manager and some of your team member, they have done something good. They uh, completed a project which was beyond your expectation and somehow they are doing pretty well. They have increased the market share. So what you are doing as a team leader or as a senior manager, you're just congratulating them by sending a congratulation letter or an appreciation letter. So what's that? That's a personalized correspondence that you want to thank that particular person and yes it can be another case that you are sharing that appreciation letter with all the employees of the organization so that you can motivate them also and can make one person as an example in front of other people. See this person has done something great and we acknowledge his or her efforts and that's how it can be an example for the other people and you can send that a letter through email to all the people working inside the organization, right? Apart from this, yes, there are certain routine correspondence matters like uh, uh, you are just regularly sharing the attendance sheet of your people and just getting it signed by all the people to ensure that yes, it is correct or it can be that every time you come up with a duty chart or a roster kind of thing wherein people are involved in different shift working time. So for that you need to go on for preparing a roster. So that is a kind of routine correspondence which is a periodic activity which is a regular activity which takes place at a certain level or at a certain interval regularly, right? 
Apart from this, yes, there are going to be circulars, circulars which can be about that you are bringing some change in the organization, you are coming up with some new event in the organization. So for that, you need to prepare circulars or some notices. So see, what I want to communicate here is that as a manager, you need to have good writing skills because you will be into the role of internal correspondence wherein you are internally communicating with people externally and so on fine so that was about the forms of business correspondence moving further i am going to highlight the different steps in the writing process majorly it is categorized into three categories the very first category talks about planning the business message see in this stage i am not focusing on drafting or writing my message what i am focusing upon is just the planning part that how i am going to articulate and yes it is going to have certain sub stages the very first sub stage talks about analyze the situation when i say analyze that means why are you writing to whom you are writing what is your purpose fine now when i say purpose you need to be sure that you want to inform or you want to persuade or you want to go on for giving some order or you want to somewhere negotiate about something so see this is what that you need to analyze the situation that why are you writing what is your purpose you want to educate you want to inform you want to persuade you want to convince what's the idea behind this particular correspondence what is my purpose so that talks about analyzing the situation right that you need to analyze the situation you need to look for the broader picture just don't go behind the message only that oh this is my message no before going into the writing part first you need to see that if i am writing an offer letter what's my purpose my purpose is that i want to get the job if i am writing a thank you letter what is my purpose i want to convey my feelings to that person i am really thankful that you have provided me with this opportunity or something like this so that is what is analyzing the situation so it comes or it forms the part of the planning phase right in the planning phase once you are clear once you are clear that okay this is the somewhere uh i got it that this is my purpose this is my aim then you need to look for gathering the information now when i say gathering the information you need to look for the sources see identifying sources from where you are going to gather the information is again a very intelligent activity you cannot just go on and gather information from any source no you need to be very clear very intelligently select that which source you will be selecting for gathering the information right because again huge information is in front of you right raw data is there but again you need to understand that what is the information which information is going to serve your purpose so that is what is about gathering the information so before gathering first you need to identify the sources and once you identify the sources then you need to go and contact these sources and you need to select now see the sources can be any it can be your colleague it can be your senior it can be your junior it can be google itself or any xyz uh, uh, source right so that you need to take care once you have gathered the information after identifying the source then in that case the third stage in the planning phase is about selecting the right medium see if i'm going for writing a letter it can be i am sending that letter in person or i am sending that letter through email 
Now this you need to decide that whether you will be going for digital sources or you will be going for the traditional sources or medium rather that you need to see for. For example, if you want to share a message and uh, with the around 5000 plus people right and those 5000 plus people they are located very distantly. So might be possible if I look after the cost aspect sending an email is going to be more convenient to me right so that looks more good idea more good medium in that situation but if in case I need to plan a message for 5000 plus people but out of those 5000 plus people I know only 10% of them check their emails regularly then in that case sending th it through electronic source sending that information through the electronic source is not a good idea. So that is what is about the third point, third sub point in the planning phase that you need to select the right medium. Also once you have done this that you have looked for your purpose, you are clear with the information, you have selected the medium then you need to organize the things together. Now organizing the message means bringing the meaningful information out of that raw data or raw things which you planned. Still mark my words learners still you are in the planning aspect you have just completed the planning you have not started writing it. Writing part takes care in the second stage of the writing process which is more about drafting business messages. Now when we say drafting, so drafting is more about the writing aspect, so that's what two points talk about is adapting well to the audience as well as drafting the real time message. Now before drafting here also one aspect is there that is adapting to the audience. Why audience? Why are you considering them? It's your message, you should go ahead with your message, but no, you need to look for that who is going to be your audience so that you can write the message as per their own language right as per them so that it should be communicated it should be the information should be transferred to them. So that's what talks about that you need to adapt yourself to the audiences and then you will be finally writing or drafting your message fine. So that writing part is now done. So the writing process should also complete but no it also has a third stage that is the finalizing business message before this you cannot make yourself move for sending that particular or circulating that particular message to outside people no you have drafted the message and that's a rough draft that's a kind of blueprint for your message it's not the final one before sending it or before making it public you need to look for these four things reviewing the message read your message again so that you should be clear that whatever you have written is actually what you wanted to write. So in this stage you are going to match up with your stage 1 and stage 2 together you are going to look back ki, oh whatever I have designed is it going in the right direction I wanted to go for persuading people am I able to persuade I was just going for educating people am I able to educate ask questions to yourself when you are reviewing the message that is going to help you a lot fine once you have reviewed from these particular angles then you need to go for producing the message that is certain times we call it as rewriting rewriting the message fine once you have done this also then you will be going for proofreading proofreading is majorly for looking for minor mistakes now when we say minor mistakes it can be spelling mistake it can be any grammatical error it can be somewhere alignment kind of error so all such errors you need to remove during the proofreading and now Finally, your message is ready to be disseminated to the world. So this is how you should always go on for planning your writing process. But what people do? People tend to just think very quickly, they'll just write it and they'll send it. Never do this. 
because it's professional writing. It's not a casual writing. It's not informal writing I'm talking about. I'm talking about what you are going to send to the people on your professional front and see whatever you are going to send because you are not there to explain to them what the meaning is. It should be conveyed through your message only. So in that way you need to think twice or thrice. You need to go for rewriting stage as well. So this is how our writing process is completed. Now moving forward I will be talking about the business letters. Now when I say business letters, what is a business letter? A business letter is a letter which is written in formal language. Highlighting this term that's formal language because when I say a business letter, we are writing to the people who are at our professional front. So we are going to use formal language for them only. Again and again, I'm highlighting one aspect that when we talk about professional writing, you cannot be casual because the moment you are going to be casual, it can harness, it can impact your goodwill, your image in the mind of the other person. And you didn't want it to convey that meaning, but some other meaning is being conveyed to the other party. So yes, go on for sticking yourself with the formal language only, fine. So usually used when writing from one business organization to the other one or from employer to the employee or from the employee to the employer or employer is writing to the publics in terms of customer and all. So this is what is a business letter. There are n number of situations are going to be faced by you when you as a manager need to write a business letter. Now just on this basis, I want to highlight different types of business letters which you as a manager is going to write. Or I'm not saying that all the letters you are going to definitely write throughout your career, but what I believe is that some or the other way, you are going to be in that situation wherein you are required to write this letter, fine? So if I talk about the very first one, that's the cover letters. Any idea what we mean by cover letter? Yes, cover letter is actually a supporting material you can say which is going to support as well as enhance my CV because whenever we send our resumes or our curriculum vitae to the organization for selection procedure we need to attach we need to attach a covering letter with it and a covering letter is one which is going to help establishing a reputation with the employer. Now when I say covering letter, a covering letter is not going to have all such details which are mentioned on the CV. Always remember this thing. If you are going to replicate your CV or resume in the covering letter, then there is no point writing a covering letter. In resume, we can only mention the skills that which skills we possess. But in covering letter, you get an opportunity that you can somewhere explain those skills in a very quick fashion so that the other person sitting on the other desk looking for after your covering letter can know that in which job position you are going to be more comfortable, more suitable. You can describe your personality a little bit so that they are able to find it convenient to match your personality with the job which they are looking for. A covering letter should never be of more than one page. No, a very lengthy covering letter is not required, but make sure that the covering letter is able to cover at least those aspects of your personality which you are not able to explain in the resume, but you get an opportunity to explain it here and employer can take it in the positive manner and you are able to establish a good reputation with the employer. So this is what is a covering letter. Moving forward, the second way 
or the second business letter is letter of recommendation. Yes, many a times you are going to be in a situation wherein you want letter of recommendation from your seniors or from some expert people or else you are going to be soon into the position wherein you will be writing recommendation letters for the other people. Now what we mean by this recommendation letter? Recommendation letter is that I am writing a letter on behalf of the other person and I am explaining that yes, this candidate possess these many skills and this candidate is good into these aspects. So some people call it as reference letter also that for example, you are applying for a job and you want a reference letter or letter of recommendation from your previous, previous college professor and your previous college professor is writing the letter of recommendation and therein he is explaining that how you are a good candidate or how you can benefit the organization. So somewhere or the other in letter of recommendation, he is going to talk about your skills and what good thing or what accomplishment or what achievement you have done in the previous college. Letter of recommendation organizations want just to go on for some kind of background investigation for that person. Okay, I got an assurance from a reputed person that yes, this particular champ or this particular candidate possess these many skills. Next in line moving forward is interview follow up letter. Yes, think of a situation wherein you went for an interview and therein in the interview uh, you did well or you are having chances you think that yes you will be successfully accomplishing that interview you'll be able to clear that interview the moment you are out of the interview room going back to your place you should always go on for writing a follow-up letter wherein you will be first thanking you should thank the employer that person is not your employer right now because you are just a job applicant. So you can say that you can write to the company personnel that thank you for providing me with this opportunity and it was wonderful experience, something good about them that yes, what, the, what you like the most about the organization if you are, were physically there. Apart from that, mention that why are you keen to join the organization now? So you can write a follow-up letter when you are in a situation wherein you feel thankful to the organization, wherein you can thank the organization as well as you can write that why are you more interested now and you can also look for that what's the deadline or what's the timeline when he can expect the results from the company. So this is what you can go on for writing an interview follow-up letter but always remember that an interview follow-up letter should be follow-up letter only. It should not be like that today you have given the interview and after one month you are writing a follow-up letter. That doesn't make any sense. Next in line, when we talk about the types of business letter, the other category is about offer letter. Offer letter is majorly issued by the employer to the job applicant and what they are doing, they are simply offering the job. Now, when we say offer letter, it is just a simple letter which is stating that yes, you as a candidate is being selected for this post, for this designation and you are required to join the organization or confirm your joining by this particular date. That's it. See, when we talk about offer letter, offer letter is just going to be an offer the company is offering the job position to the candidate. Yes, the candidate can deny or can take. That's his choice. So, as an employer, remember one thing that whenever you are writing an offer letter, you should mention the date as well. That up to what date the candidate can say yes or no to the job offer. Otherwise, offering a job simply and you are not asking about any deadline and for example 
today you got the interview done after one week you come up with the results after one week you send the offer letter and now after one year the person is confirming that again doesn't make any sense right now moving further the next is sales letter yes in fact that's very very important letter why i'm saying important is because somewhere or the other it is going to bring or attract the customers the people who like the product so sales letter needs to have all such capability wherein you will be highlighting each and every point in detail about the product or the service which you are going for so this is what is a sales letter a sales letter you will be finding that it tends to have um, the tone is that you will be going on for persuading people you will be highlighting the benefits more you will be trying to bring a connection between the product or service and the person who is going to use it so this is what is a sales letter see many a times people do call uh, some business plans which are which you are proposing through a letter also as a sales letter because therein also you are going to pitch some idea you are going to convince some other person the receiver about your idea so some people tend to bring that particular aspect also under the sales letter right now when we say sales letter but it make sure that it is smartly designed wherein whatever you are mentioning it is quite specific things it should not be vague the person who is reading the sales letter he should know that what are going to be the specified benefits of this thing what i am going to get in back or in return so that's what is about sales letter next in line we do have letters of commendation yes you are going to be in the process wherein you are writing letters of commendation for the people around you take yourself as the senior manager of the organization some of your team member that person has done excellent in his or her job now what you are doing you are congratulating that person and you are conveying this information with the help of a letter wherein you will be first thanking that person praising that person what he did you will be mentioning and then you tend to close on very positive note that you are looking forward for such many more success such many more acts in the coming future so letter of commendation is somewhere or the other it acts as a motivational tool for the people who are getting that letter of commendation not just for those people in fact letter of commendation if you are issuing for some of your team member the other team members can also be motivated because they can see that yes the my colleagues efforts are being praised it is being recognized so i might also be repeating this behavior that's basic human psychology so letter of commendation acts as a motivational tool for your people in fact i'm going to suggest you that whenever you are into the managerial key managerial positions you should always go on for giving letter of commendation to your people that's the best way to praise them to motivate them apart from this another one is resignation letter yes after just after letter of commendation you might be finding that i am going to the resignation letter but yeah that's also the part and parcel of the workplace when i say resignation letter resignation letter is uh, somewhere you should go for the direct approach when it is a resignation letter i'll tell you why because there is no point going the indirect approach going for unnecessary uh, material which is not required because resignation letter should be somewhat more straight more direct wherein in the initial few lines itself you should so elaborate that why are you leaving when you are leaving and you can follow up with that what was the reason you are leaving also you can start with a very positive line that you worked here from last so many years and it was a great experience so that's your choice right but 
you should never go on for writing a resignation letter with more of the negative tone, with more of the negative words. Undoubtedly, uh, whenever we talk about resignation letters, you will be finding that a person majorly, an employee or the person working in the organization, they majorly convey their resignations verbally. But every organization has a mechanism and they want to get it documented as well and for the same you are going to be required to write your resignation letter. So somewhere you should avoid using negative tone. You should not go on for highlighting the negative aspects that why are you leaving. You can go on but not too much of the negative tone should be there because if you really want to cherish or if you really want to have good future connections, you, sh you should never go on for writing a resignation letter with a very negative tone. In fact, you should end your letter with a very positive tone that if in near future the company requires you or your skills or your competencies, you will be there. Yes. So this is how you should plan for writing a resignation letter. Apart from resignation letter, another category is about thank you letters. Thank you letter is again a courteous gesture towards the receiver which you want to show. Now it can be that the receiver is your customer and you just want to say thank to that person for utilizing your services, your products or it can be your you are going to write a thank you letter to your shareholders, to your investors for investing more and making you more prof profitable company or you are just writing a thank you letter to your employees. Fine. And when I say thank you letter, you need to be highly courteous. Your gestures should be there. Positive gestures should be there. And of course, it's going to be with the positive tone only. Moving further, I am going to talk about some more business letters. Complain letters is the another letter wherein you are going to write your grievances. You will be mentioning your grievances. See, again, I will say that you are mentioning your grievances completely fine, but don't go with a negative tone. Just using abusive words, never do that. State your problem in the complaint letter. Also tell that how you want that problem to be sorted out. What deadlines you have decided for yourself to get this, uh, this problem sorted out that you mentioned rather than going on the negative aspect, going for the abusive language, abusive words. No, don't go for that. State your problem. Tell the solution also if you know some solution or what you expect to be done or tell the also tell the deadlines. Apology letter. Yes, you might be in the condition or you might be in a situation wherein you need to apologize. And when I say apologize, apologize there is no problem and you can go on for apologizing your mistakes through letters. That is again a very good gesture which makes you more humble with the other person look forward to you and they tend to accept your apologies more easily. So go for writing an apology letter wherein you should mention that why are you apologizing and if you want to tell some way also to go and correct that particular mistake mention that also. Also in line we have office memorandum normally office memorandum letters are wherein you want to share some specific short information with your people not the big one not the lengthy one small specific brief information with your people for that we go on for writing office memorandum letters right. Also the welcome letter is there. Now you are in a situation wherein you are the top management, the key personnel, the key HR in the organization and you are, welcoming, you are welcoming some of your people, some of your people like some of your new joinees in the organization and when I say welcome, you should try to start with the company introduction, then you should go on telling and welcoming the person with positive tone, with positive words. And then you can always tell that where the person can contact to whom if that person is in trouble or if exactly not trouble, but if he is having certain problems, 
to whom he should look forward to. That is what is a welcome letter. Apart from this, you will be writing request letters. Yes. As a manager, you are writing a request letter. You want some budget from your man marketing manager or head marketing manager and you are writing a request letter or else you just want a small piece of information from the HR department and as a marketing person you are writing a request letter for requesting them to provide you with some information. So that is what request letter is and again here also in request letter I am going to suggest you to go for the direct approach wherein you will be just starting and stating your request that what you want and by what time you want. That is again a good strategy to go on for writing a request letter. Apart from request letter, you are going to go for some kind of announcement letters, announcing some new changes, some important information. Also, it can be you are coming up announcing some new products or services or you might be going on for uh, some shift or new openings. Right. So, you can go on for writing the announcement letters wherein you are focusing on the announcement of some new thing which you want to convey to the people around you. Last but not the least one is the termination letter. Yes, you might be in the capacity certain times wherein you need to do this uh, negative aspect. Negative why I am saying negative because again terminating someone it does not feel good. But of course, something has gone wrong and that is why you are being forced to write a termination letter for someone. Now, when you are writing the termination letter, always remember one thing that you should focus on the action of the person, not the person, right? I am repeating again, you should focus on the actions or on the misdeeds of the person, not on the person. Whatever you are writing, whatever, wherever that person was wrong, you can mention, but again, it should be linked with the employment terms only, fine? So that is how termination letter you can plan for. So these are the different types of business letters which you will be writing when you are going to be in the capacity of the organization. Moving forward, I will be talking about guidelines for effective business writing. Now the very first and the most important guideline is that you should always start writing or develop the you attitude. Rather than using I, we, my, you should go on for respecting the other person, the receiver person who is going to receive the message, who is the audience. So try to refer to the reader's point of view. I'm going to highlight one example. See, the author emphasis. Normally where we get wrong, we are sending out interview calls next Monday. Usage of we should be replaced by you because that seems to be a more positive approach. You should receive the appointment letter by Wednesday, September 9. That is more positive approach because wherein I am putting the receiver or the audience in the prime position. So that is what is required. Now how you can develop this you attitude? The moment you will start empathizing with the people, putting yourself in their shoes, you will be able to do that. The tone which you want to be used by you, if you are able to empathize this, right, you will be using the similar tone with the other people. Also, try to highlight the benefit to the reader, not to yourself. Okay, okay, by selling this product, my company is going to be profitable. No, you should tell that why the audience or why that person should use this product. What's the benefit? So try to focus upon highlighting the benefits for the reader. Try to avoid using negative words, fine. If I say an example, your money will not be refunded if the product is dirty and not resellable. 
your money will not be refunded. So that is a negative connotation. Whereas I can say money can be refunded if the product is clean and dry. So that talks about a more positive approach, more positive words. Apart from this, use familiar words if you want to develop you attitude. Don't go out for using your sophisticated language, your technical language with everyone around you. Use familiar words. As I already discussed in previous session that for salary, we can use remuneration as well. But what's the more common, more familiar word? That's salary. Again, there are certain differences, but commonly we should use salary rather than the remuneration term. Also, offer helpful suggestions to your people when you are writing. For example, if you are writing a recommendation letter and you cannot provide the recommendation because that is not from your organization side, that is banned, you cannot do that. So you provide the person with some alternative that yes, you can go and contact your professors. So that is what offer helpful suggestions to your audience. Another guideline which I am going to talk about is use natural language. Do not go on for using heckin expressions like as per your request can always be replaced by as you requested. We beg to advise can always be replaced by we can say. Go for natural language. Do not sophisticate yourself much, right? Avoid clutches, archaic expressions because they are only going to make your message dull. You think that they, you are going to beautify your message, sorry, you are not going to beautify your message, you will be making it more dull. So do not go for that. Apart from this, yes, you should go on for brevity. What is brevity? That is concise, clear, specific, right? saying only what needs to be said and leaving out unnecessary words. For example, if I say the restaurant is in proximity to my home, I can also say the restaurant is nearby my home. That is it. I am simply using a simple word. Avoid unnecessary wordy expressions. In proximity to can be replaced by nearby. Along the lines of can be replaced by like. So why to go on for more wordy expressions? Also, you can change long phrases, long clauses into small phrases. Long sentences, some people say like that, into small phrases. You can see one example here. She is so honest that she will not tell a lie. We can simply say she is too honest to tell a lie. You can also say that I need cards that are of formal type. In place of this, what you can say, I need formal cards. Why to use such long clause when you can say it in a very simple language, in a simple phrase? So you can do that. Also, another guideline which I am going to suggest you for making your letters more impactful, go on for using active voice rather than the passive voice. I hope you people know that what we mean by the subject and the predicate in the active and the passive voice. Subject is that about which something is said, predicate is whatever is said about the subject. I will show you the example. Now the same sentence we are going to phrase in the active voice as well as the passive voice. Active voice says packaging often describes the products look and feel to the buyer. What is the most important part which I wanted to highlight in the message is the packaging. But now look at, at its passive voice. The products look and feel are often described to the buyer by its packaging. The message is now totally distorted. I wanted to highlight only the packaging aspect but now it is again packaging is coming towards the end losing its essence. So. I should go on for framing my sentences in the active voice rather than the passive voice. Apart from this, make your message clear. It should not be ambiguous. It should be accurate. Fine. Also, you should go on for improving onto the correctness and the completeness of the message. I will tell you how. 
we need more people for new office more means what do you mean by more we need 10 people for new office in bandra fine now the uh, the information is complete i got to know that yes this person requires 10 new more people for bandra office that's it so complete your message don't lose it in between fine also courtesy and consideration do consider when you are writing consider your audience who is going to be your audience draft the message as per their convenience as per their clarity as per their knowledge also use courteous words you should be always humble thanks humble respect use these words very often when you are drafting a message also in this connection avoid using sexist language don't do that most of us do this do not use he as a generic pronoun which we tend to go you can see this example it is a sexist connect a manager writes to his peers in an informal or semi-formal tone revised as manager write to there i hope you are able to find the difference his is replaced by there because we have this tendency to go on for using he as a generic pronoun which is incorrect way of usage avoid using words which suggest all employees to be of same gender for example you are writing a job description and you are writing an experienced typist is required he should never you use this you should say he or she should because it can be male it can be female why are we generalizing it as from the male's perspective also do not use words that degrades the dignity and status of any gender normally what we say what we say the best man will win no we should go on for using the best person we should replace men with the person that's what you should go on for also look for your tone now again when we talk about tone it can be informal it can be semi-formal it can be formal pure formal now you need to look for colloquialism colloquials are that you might be using guys you might be using hubby in place of husband while drafting the message again on the professional front you should not go on for doing that you are using some slangs you are using some jargons regional words no not that you should avoid doing that also if it is a semi-formal tone you want to go for that yes you can if it is a formal one you should go with the proper format and everything moving forward i will be talking about the format of business letter how you should go on for drafting your business letter yes certain time it is like the company letterhead you tend to write the letter on the company letterhead fine so when it is a company letterhead what will happen the company name and everything will be written in between the basic details but if in case you are not writing on the company letterhead then you need to go on for this alignment in the first return address line one or two it is sender's address sender's address right your basic detail after that you can write the date leaving one gap then you can write the date that is month for example september 25 1998 right no 25th no nothing like that it should be september 25 1998 with a comma then you should go on for leaving another gap and then you should write the name of the full name of the recipient mr raj kumar full name you should not go on for writing Mr. Kumar or Mr. Srivastava or so on. You should go on for writing full name. That's Mr. Raj Kumar. Title or position of the recipient, assistant manager, company name might be XYZ company, recipient's address line, his or her address line as well. 
his company address. Again, make sure that it should be aligned towards the left side. Then you will be writing again the salutation part, dear Mr. So and so. Don't go on for writing dear Mrs. Dear Miss. Either go on for writing dear sir or dear madam. That is the correct way. Then mention the subject. Subject should be not more than of six to eight words. Again, that is also a big lengthy subject. It should be less than somewhere six maximum 8 but not more than that. That should summarize the purpose of your letter. Then go on for writing the body of the paragraphs, right? Please make your paragraphs small paragraphs, not very big. 10 lines paragraphs is not an ideal paragraph in the letter. Then you will be going on for complimentary clause. You can go on for sincerely, truly and so on. Then your signature, your name, your designation. Then comes the enclosure. Now enclosures are the document or you can say it is the supporting document. For example, if I am writing a complaint letter, right, I am complaining about some product which I have received in very damaged way. So I am enclosing the invoice number, the receipt of that product. So I am mentioning it here that receipt enclosed, uh, invoice enclosed. Then last is typist initials. Typist initials is basically that if anyone else is drafting the message on my behalf, he will be writing, he or she will be writing their initials. Just moving and showing you the full block style. When we say full block style, everything is indented on this particular side as you can see. Everything starts from this end. But if it is a semi block style, you will be finding that the address line of the sender comes on the right side and it is the recipient's address line and you start your paragraphs by leaving little space, one tab and then you will be starting your paragraphs. You can see in this, right? And then comes the closure aspect which is going again to be aligned on the other side. So that's the difference between the full block style and the semi block style. So dear learners, I hope you are able to understand the basic principles of drafting a professional written message and what are the different types of letters as well as what is the format of letter, semi block, full block and so on. So I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you and happy learning.